If you are a web developer, then you need to know about these new CSS features. They all became finally available last year, and at least one of them is a real game changer for me. And the cool thing is, I'm not going to introduce you to experimental features that only work in one browser that you can only really use in a few years' time. No. These features are all supported by the major browsers and are really helpful in everyday use. Let's go! One feature that you've probably heard of, as it's one of the most popular, is container queries. And I'll briefly explain what's so fantastic about container queries and how you can save a lot of lines of CSS with them. When responsive design became more important on the web, media queries were introduced, so one can relatively easily define breakpoints in CSS above or below which certain CSS rules are active. Let's take a look at this card element as an example. We have a media query for this, and if the width of the viewport is more than 600 pixels, we assign it flex direction row, and then the image and text are displayed next to each other, otherwise one below the other. Now, what's so great about container queries? Here we have the same card element in different places in the layout. On top, across the entire width of the page, then we have it in columns. In one case, there are two columns with the same size, and in the other case, we have two columns with different sizes. There is still the media query with the breakpoint at 600 pixels, and it still makes sense for the first card at the top. If the viewport is smaller, the layout changes. But it doesn't look good for other occurrences of the card. The content is squeezed even with a larger viewport. I need separate media queries for each variant in which I use the card. For the two columns of the same size, for example, I define one with a breakpoint at 1200 pixels. And in the example with the card over two thirds, we roughly break at 900 pixels. That looks pretty good, but it's not mathematically correct, and that brings us to container queries. I no longer need to start doing math with container queries and deduce the appearance of child elements of my layout from the viewport. And I don't need a separate media query for each different occurrence of my card. Using container queries, we can define breakpoints based on the width of an element's parent element and not the viewport. And this is so cool. So we simply write add container greater than 600 pixels and then give all cards the correct flex direction. The only other thing I have to do here is to set container type inline size for the containers, which in our case are the columns. That's it. And now we have exactly what we want with a single selector. If a column is larger than 600 pixels, the cards in it can be displayed horizontally. This makes responsive layout much, much easier. On to the next CSS feature, which will make CSS preprocessors like SAS unnecessary in some cases. Especially if you have a heavily nested layout, CSS selectors become very verbose. And this is where SCSS, for example, has come to the rescue, because it allows me, among other things, to nest CSS selectors. But I can now also do that with regular CSS. So if it's only about nesting, I no longer need a CSS preprocessor. The major browsers now all understand nesting by themselves. And let's take a look at my previous example. Here, parts of the selectors are repeated over and over again. Card, 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 text, 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 and so on. And I can now simply nest them inside each other. And there's a new selector, ampersand. This allows me to reference the surrounding selector within a nesting. That means to further specify the anchor element, for example, as here with hover. Overall, our CSS file doesn't necessarily have fewer lines thanks to nesting, but it's so much clearer and more intuitive, simply less verbose. I find that such a useful feature. Before we get to my absolute favorite CSS innovation of the last months, I'll tell you about a useful upgrade to CSS Grids. If you work with CSS grids, and if not, then you should, they are great, then you've probably often reached the point where you define a grid, which then applies to all direct child elements, but it no longer applies to further sub-elements. So you would then have to define a separate grid if you want to align content to it. Here's an example. I have created this newspaper pen. Here we have defined a grid on the main element with four columns and seven rows. The header element and the article elements are all aligned with this grid. For example, this uh, editorial here has three columns and four rows. Now I want to do the following. In this article here with the ID subordinate, I also want to align the heading and the text to the grid. The heading on the left in one column and the text on the right in two columns. Previously, you would have had to define a separate grid here, which needs to be manually aligned with the higher level grid. In this case, three columns wide and one column high. I would also have to specify the grid gap again, a redundant and if I change something on the parent grid, I would then also have to transfer this to the lower level grid. But now there is 
subgrid. I can now simply specify in my article element grid template columns as usual, but do not write new column definitions here, but subgrid. Now this element takes over the parent grid. This means that I can now align child elements of this element with the grid of main. This works as usual and I then say that the heading starts in column 1 and goes across one column and the text starts in column 2 and goes across two columns. For the sake of completeness, you can of course still define a new grid for a child element. I did that here in the bottom article. Here I define completely different columns and this then applies to the child elements. This is then a grid within a grid and not a subgrid. This can also be useful from time to time. And now we come to my absolute favorite. I've been waiting a long, long time for this. The new Has Pseudo class is a real game changer for me. If you build a selector with it, then it applies to all elements that contain at least one specific element that is noted in the brackets after Has. And that makes Has a parent selector, so to speak. What's so special about it? Well, what you've always been able to do in CSS is say, if an element A contains an element B, apply this rule to element B. Sure, you do that all the time. But what you couldn't do is say, if element A contains an element B, apply a rule to A. And you can do that now. A condition that applies in the depths of the DOM can therefore have a design effect on a higher element. And this enables many new things that were previously only possible with JavaScript or some CSS hacks. A very simple example. We have a small form with two sections. If the user makes an incorrect entry in a field, we can use has to put a red frame around the entire section containing the field, or even a label in front of an input that is invalid. Previously, this was only possible with JavaScript or a hack. You then used to place the label after the input in the DOM and styled it by absolute positioning so that it was still appearing in front of it, and then you could use a sibling selector because one has been able to color a label after an invalid input read for quite some time, but not before it. This also works now. I then simply say, if an input container contains an invalid input with has, then apply the following rule to the label in the input container, done. This example that I've created works in the same way. An input in material design look and feel with an animation on the label. This works completely without JavaScript and without any CSS hacks. Like all the other examples in this video, I have linked the code in the video description. Another cool example in combination with a grid. Here I can check at first whether the last child element is the fourth, the fifth, the sixth element and so on, depending on how many elements the grid contains. This way I can kind of count in CSS. And then I change the grid layout depending on the number of child elements. Imagine for example an image gallery that always makes optimum use of its space depending on the number of images. Brilliant! And all without having to program anything. And personally, I always like it when I can solve things that only affect the presentation only with CSS and don't need JavaScript for that. Last but not least, another great CSS feature that has recently become available. Especially in headings or hero elements, it often doesn't look so nice when a single word is wrapped to the next line. How can you solve this? The element is always displayed differently on different devices and different sizes. So working with dynamic resizing of the container or even inserting line breaks or something like that is not a nice solution. But this has now been solved with the text wrap value balance. If you set this, the text content of an element is wrapped evenly or balanced. And this is what it looks like in our example. Great! One note, however, text wrap balance costs a lot of computing power because letters are counted here. You should therefore not use it on long paragraphs with many lines, or the browser will even limit this itself. Also, I said at the beginning of the video that you can use all those CSS properties in all major browsers. With text wrap balance, this is only partially the case. For Safari, the setting is currently at the time of recording this video in the technology preview. This means that it will probably be available very soon. Why I included the feature anyway? It does not harm if the setting is simply not considered by the browser. If you don't already have a mechanism with JavaScript, for example, that displays the heading balanced, then this feature won't make anything worse. In Safari, everything remains the same, and in the other browsers, the headline is balanced. And that's basically it for this video. Thanks for watching. I would really appreciate a like. Please also consider subscribing, that would help me a lot. See you next time.